Corn Woodbury Wine here to talk about the Corvin system and how we're going to use it at Woodbury Wine. Michael. All right. Thanks, Dan Gliski. <laughs> and thank you, Chuck. All right. Um, so I am adding these three wonderful bottles here to the, uh, to the Corvin Library. Very excited to take them out today and taste them. Um, so, so take a look at the labels. You'll have access to these fantastic uh, wines as soon as I'm done with them today. And I'm probably going to grab them again next week because these are some cool uh, bottles of juice. Take a look at the fill on this wine. I pulled this wine about three weeks ago. Probably tasted about 20 times. There's a lot left. You can get a lot of taste out of a bottle of wine with the Corbin. So I'm going to start by doing... Um, we're going to taste the Eshazo today. I'm going to kind of talk to you a little bit about some of the things that go on in my head when I'm using it. First, I do like to, to try to pierce the cork um, in the same spot every time. And how I do that is I come from the back of the bottle as opposed to the front of the bottle. I put the back of the bottle pointing at me. I grab my Corvin. I attach it. Make sure it's on there nice and fantastic secure. Make sure my needle, your needle is a screw-in kind of thing. Make sure my needle's tight. And then I just pierce the cork. At that point, I do for some reason like to pour myself first um, just to get the Corvin rolling on my glass so it rolls smooth into the next glass. And I just simply do one. That's one of the reasons why I do myself first. three pumps. You usually don't have to do that when there's some air in it, but because there's no room in this. And that's for the most part the size of a Corbin taste. My customer would then get this. Beware of those uh, residual drips by the way. And then my next customer tasting with me would get this. Notice the one quick pump for the two follow-up ones. Now, can you see where that fills at? It is a burgundy bottle, so it's a different shape. Can you turn the bottle just a little bit? Oh yeah. See me pull that up. Sometimes it takes a little strength. And this bottle is ready to be tapped. There is always a little puddle on top, by the way, guys. So proceed with caution on that. I'll take a little napkin if you don't mind. So, Michael, in your experience, how long will a Corvin bottle last? And I, I have not had, I have not had a bottle, and I've had a few for months, and I have not. I, I think it's amazing. I think it's incredible how how fresh the wine stays. Now, I didn't notice you put in any argon gas in that bottle after you pulled it. So, so, the, so know that every time you press that button, wine flows out of, the, out, of the, uh, out of the needle and gas flows into the bottle. So, so there's nothing happens. else you have to do. So every time you pump that. Right. So the force, I, I believe, so the force of the argon gas forces the wine through the cork, through the needle and then it becomes down to pressure. So when it stops pouring, that means the pressure, there's no pressure. It's just gas and wine. So everything you did there is all that anybody needs right. to do to use right. the Corvette system effectively? Yes. Okay. Just know that Just know that what I said was, once you press that button, it shoots argon, argon gas in there, which creates pressure. And then, because of that pressure, the wine comes out of the needle into the glass. Michael, thank you very much. So we've got six wines that are going to, go, going to be going into the Corvin library here to be used by other people. Jean-Marc Milo Echezo, Grand Cru. Cheers. Cheers.